hold on. I am so glad that I have a hand I can hold that will never let go. Amen. Aren't you all so glad that you can hold on to God's hand and it is an unchanging hand? Amen. Hallelujah. It never gets tired. It never wears out. It never wants to break away. It never wants to let go. Amen. Even when we are ready to let go, even when we get tired, it holds on strong. Amen. Amen. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hey, Amen. You better hold on. You better hold on. Amen. If you all will please stand with me as we recite our praise festival. Hallelujah. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord on this first Sunday morning. Amen. 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 And it reads, why have we come? We have come to praise the Lord. What has the Lord done? He has done great things for his people. And how shall we give him praise? Why praise? Hallelujah. 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 Let us praise the Lord. Let us praise the Lord. Let us praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. unto me let us go into the house of the Lord our feet shall stand within thy gates O Jerusalem let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O Lord my strength and my redeemer For he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth. For he has done marvelous, marvelous things. And when we send praises unto the Lord, singing our hymn, hymn number 394, we are often tossed and driven, listed in your bulletin. Praise God that we'll understand it better by and by. Come on, everybody, lift up your voices. Put those blessed hands together. Amen, as we bless God today. Yes. We are often, we are often tossed on the, on the restless sea. Summer skies and howling. All succeed a bright in the land of perfect day. When the midst have we'll understand it. Come on, everybody. Sing it by and by. When the morning comes. Oh, Trusting in the Lord and according, according to his word. 
Temptations, get in the of the taker, and our hearts are made for a thought is where to be, and we wonder when we try, but we'll understand it better. Sing it by and by when the morning comes. All the saints of God gather at home. Tell the story how we overcome and we'll understand. Come on, one more time. Sing it by. comes to lead us in prayer. I think we all are keenly aware of some of the tragedies and some of the things that have happened in our community on this week, this weekend. And so I ask that you just not spectate as he prays. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He has first has a tough act to follow because Caveman prayed last Sunday. So yeah, press is already on him. But I need us to pray together for the healing in our land, amen. I need us to pray for the families that have been adversely affected. I need us to pray for the school that's receiving unjust ridicule, amen. I just need us to pray because God hears and answers prayer. And after this prayer, Reverend Kay will come and lead us in the reading of the word. We confess that our thoughts are not your thoughts. Yeah. Our ways are, are not your ways. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And your ways are not our ways, God. And God, we come to you this morning just confessing that, that we do not understand everything that goes on in this world. God, as the song says, the sea comes and, and, and it tosses us to and fro. And we don't always understand. But we know that you are there with us through it all. Through the good times and the bad times. That you are right there suffering right along with us, God. And I pray that you would give us wisdom and discernment, help us to grow, help us to understand it better by and by. Thank you, Lord. And for those things that we do not understand, God, I pray that you would give us faith, that we would trust in you, trust in your promises, that we would stand on your promises when there is nothing else to stand on, God. That our faith would not be on sinking sand, God, but that our faith would be on Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
God, I pray for those who have been impacted by the hurricane this week. I pray for those who have experienced death. Pray for those families. God, be with them, comfort them, guide them. I pray for the first responders that you would be with them. And I pray that you would be in the recovery, the cleanup efforts, God. Be with those people there. And God, we pray for our community. And God, we pray for those impacted by uh, these shootings. And God, for our schools and for, for students. And, and, and God, I, I pray that you would just bring healing. Peace. God, I pray for this church, and, and I thank you for uh, the, the many blessings that you have given us, God. And God, I pray that we would understand that we are blessed in order to be a blessing. I thank you for the work that we do in the feeding ministry and, and in so many other ministries in this church, God. I pray that your hand would be on each and every person in this room, that you would guide them, equip them, bring them hope and peace and restoration so that we can be a light for this community. God, I pray for our pastor, Pastor Keith Mays. God, I pray that you would be with him, guide him, be with his family, bless him. And I pray as we look to a new year, a new conference year, God, that you would give us wisdom and discernment. Yes, yes. God, we confess that uh, we don't always get it right. So we just take a moment to confess our sins to you. We know that you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And as the song says, we, we are overcomers. God, we know that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, through Jesus Christ. And so by and by, God, through, through it all, come and be with us. Though the waves may toss us to and fro, May we know that you are our anchor. And we thank you and praise you for these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Pray for me. Yes. Pray for me. Yes. 
say Thank you, Father, I'm on my way. Ah, ah, thank the Lord. I'm on, on my way. Now come on, everybody. Pray for me. he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry although I was formerly a blasphemer a persecutor and an insolent man but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief and the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Yeah. However, for this reason, I obtain mercy that in me first, Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. Now to the eternal king, immortal, invisible to God who alone is wise be honor and glory forever and ever amen
I need about 10 people who are grateful just to be alive to tell the Lord thank you. Come on. About 10 people who are thankful that he woke you up this morning. Tell the Lord thank you. About 10 people who are thankful that you're clothed in your right mind. Tell the Lord thank you. Legs to walk. You might not feel as good as you always felt, but you're still able to put one foot in front of the other. I dare you to tell him thank you. Clothed in your right mind. Come on, tell the Lord thank you. Yeah. Grateful from my heart. My issue don't stop me from being grateful. Amen. Come on, give them a hand. a ticket for someone who wants to go and unable to go. Do that. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. God is so good. Anybody been blessed this week? Amen. In spite of all that is transpiring in our community of a negative nature, God is still good and God's hand is still in it. The word Romans 8 28 says, For we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. Amen. Sometimes it's hard to see it, but he said, His ways are not our ways, His thoughts are not our thoughts. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we get stuck on Crucifixion Friday yes. and don't keep in mind that there's a resurrection Sunday. Amen. If there had not been a Crucifixion Friday, that could not have been a resurrection Sunday. Sometimes God allows us to go through our own personal crucifixions just so that he could resur res resurrect us. Amen. And give us the praise report that our latter is greater than our former. 
Amen. Praise his name. Praise his name. We just bless God today. All that he's doing. So good to see all of you. I would that you would uh, keep Dr. Geraldine Eulenberg in prayer in Vanderbilt Hospital in Nashville. She's, she's going through right now, but God is still able. Yeah. And she tunes in every Sunday, so I need you to just put your hands together so she can hear it and know that we're praying for you. We're praying with you that God would cover you, that God would take care of you. Amen. We're praying for her. And we're also praying for, for Mian, her daughter, who's there with her now. And, uh, and before we leave today, I want us to do something to bless her and her travel. She's having to go there every other week, uh, swapping out with her aunt who's going from Texas, and the lodging is expensive, and, and they don't have anybody there, or the travel is expensive, and, and I just want her to know that her home church, we're standing with her, amen? Yeah, it, it's, it's her turn today, but it could be our turn today, amen? And so before we leave, amen, we'll give us an opportunity to, to be a blessing to them as they are going through what they're going through. Amen. Are there any first-time worshipers, any first-time worshipers? Amen. Would you stand up and greet us? Amen. 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 Where you from? Well, praise the Lord. Come on, put your hands together. Welcome, my brother. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Welcome to Vernon. Amen. I, uh, that, 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 that canvas out there, that's it. It's just canvas. We. I would I, I will tell you something else. There's some black devils too. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. But I thank God that He's He's just God for everybody. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Praise His name. We are so happy to see you. And anything that we could do to make you feel more at home, don't fail to let us know. But I thank God for your worship spirit. You've already made yourself at home, and we bless God for that. I shared last Sunday uh, some of our vision for uh, the interests of Faith Hall, and I want to say this now so that uh, uh, when it comes to giving time, when Cayman puts the giving opportunities up for those online who will be giving electronically, you can sow into this vision as well. We're going to be redoing the interests of Faith Hall, completely redoing the interests of Faith Hall. And we're going to be uh, moving our feeding program to the side door. And so we'll, amen. And so we'll need to redo some things at that door. And uh, I, I told you last week that I was pledging the first $1,000 because I want us to do this. I want uh, our church to look first class just like we are, amen. Amen. This feeding ministry is an awesome ministry. Amen. And anything we can do to fine tune it, to make it safer and better for those who are doing it, and also for the comfort of those who are coming in and out, um, I just felt glad that it would be better suited for us to move it to the side entrance. Amen. And so that we can really beautify our front door. Stand up, Sister Jenny. Stand up, Sister Jenny. Yeah. Uh, and I know you didn't want me to tell this, but I got to say this to inspire somebody else. I came in and, and saw that Sister Jenny had left that same pledge, but she, she didn't just pledge it. She, she, she made it tangible. She left a $1,000 check to help us start our renovation from the front door. And I just want to say thank you. Amen. Amen. And so uh, we're not going to be the long range on this pro project. Uh, 
the beautification committee that will be working with me on this uh, will be Sister Ruth Gaines, Sister Ayeen, Reverend Ayeen Martin, and Sister Jenny. Amen. Amen. And we're going to be bringing some things back to y'all. We're going to make this nice and pretty aesthetically. These are people who are already working around the church to beautify things and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Amen. And so as we receive our pledges, as we receive our pledges, our captains to receive them, amen, will be Sister Deborah Conley, who's the treasurer of the trustee board, and Brother Fred uh, Freeman, who's the church treasurer, amen. And so we want to do this orderly. We want to do this as a team, amen. It's been said and rightfully so. Teamwork will make the dream work. We're going to do this, amen. Vernon is really the face of Greenwood, and what we have to be keenly aware of as they are building up around us and planning to build around us and beautify everything else, we don't want to be archaic and left in the ruins, amen? I mean, I know we survived the massacre, but we don't want to look like we're still in the massacre, amen? Amen. So that's why it's so important that we march forward, amen, with our amphitheater, with our parking lot, with the front entrance of our church, and do those things to show God that we're grateful for what he blessed us with. Also, um, Sister Judy, leave me alone. I'm going to tell you something. Um, I'm saying this because I mentioned Brother Fred, I mean, Brother Frederick uh, Wright in a meeting uh, yesterday to say that he'll probably be a part of a meeting today. There'll be a meeting across the street at 4 o'clock at the Culture Center, and Brother Fred, when he was at the house doing some repairs, talked about McLean School when he was in education and some other things. There'll be an important meeting there uh, from uh, leaders and concerned citizens and educators um, regarding the shootings and the things that are happening in the school system and just so that we can come up with a plan to be proactive rather than reactive. Uh, 17 year old shot down gun at the gun down at the homecoming on Friday, another one injured, uh, one died, one injured, another one leaving the central uh, game shot, killed. Um, thank God there was an arrest last night and other shootings in the community. And these are children killing children, amen. We get enraged when police or people of other ethnic origins shoot black folk, but why not be enraged when we're shooting each other down, amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's important that we call it like it is and stop pointing the finger of blame and address ourselves. The Bible says judgment begins at your house and spreads abroad. So um, at four o'clock, right across the street at the cultural center, if you're concerned, I, I heard Sheila addressing it so um, adequately and eloquently during Sunday school and, and, and Dr. Miles was telling us how we got to open up and receive, amen, and learn. So it's important, amen, it's open, come, uh, participate in the healing of our land, amen, the healing of our city. Some of you have children and grandchildren in the school system and it's scary. Some of you are still educators in the school system and it's scary. And so it's important that we come together and pray together for change, amen. Somebody shout change. Change, amen. Um, any birthdays in October? Yes, sir. Any birthdays in October? Amen. Amen. Look at these birthdays in October. Yeah. I think Cayman got something for you all. Amen. Like Fred had something for y'all too, right? Eh?
Come on, put those hands together. Come on. Come on, give them a hand, amen. I see one back there that I know is under 18, amen. Come on, amen. You almost sat down too quick, amen. Come on. Amen. Come on, baby. That you can, mama, take you to the fair. The fair is going on here. Yeah, that even bless you. Bless you. Happy birthday. Amen. Now, how many other October birthdays? But oh, y'all said that. I ain't gonna worry about it then. Amen. Now, I'm not going to ask who's the oldest. I'll ask who's the most blessed. Who's the most blessed? Who's, all of y'all that had hands up, he woke you up this morning. Aren't you, you can't let nobody out praise you. And I, Who's the most blessed? Everybody say, I am. Everybody say, I am. Amen. Because he blessed me in spite of me. Amen. Come on, y'all. Come on. I got your dinner for the day. Amen. Amen. I'm just glad it wasn't five or six of y'all. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Happy birthday. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Come on, Dr. Miles, while I change my mind. Bless you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Fred. Brother Fred was on point. He had that in. So came the next Sunday, don't, next first said, don't worry about it. Thank you, Brother Fred. Amen. They were singing it, too. I heard, I heard Sister Pat. Amen. Sounded good, too. But you know, I'm going to have another one for you all.
I see you, Sister Jane. Sammy Mayfield, I love the blues, amen. Anybody else here like music, amen. Praise his name. One you never had before. Come on, give the Lord some praise, amen, amen. Now, I'm gonna tell you all in advance. Gee, somebody's, somebody's going to have something negative to say about that. But that's all right. Amen. The rest of us enjoyed it. Amen. <laughs> Today is your birthday. One you've never had before. And one you'll never have again. You know, God wants us to enjoy our salvation. Amen. I know some of us are so holier than I know. God wants you to loosen up and enjoy life. He said, I would that you would have life and have life more abundantly. You can still be saved and have a good time. Amen. Any anniversaries in the month of October? Yes. Any anniversaries? All right, Mother Shannon. Amen. 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 Raise your hand, Brother Johnny. Amen. How many years? My, my, my. Come on, church. Stand with me. Stand with me. Stand with me as we salute the Shannon. Amen. Fifty-six years, amen, amen. Some folk can't stay together fifty-six days, fifty-six hours. So I thank God for this praying couple. I, I know they pray, because every Sunday they come in and they stop at the altar and get on their knees and talk to God, amen, amen. Sister Shannon, how did God keep you? How did you make it fifty-six years? Love and communication. But Johnny, bless. You know how you say, man, 56 years? Just keep going home. Amen. <laughs> keep praying. 56 years. Amen. I am so thankful for you all. So happy for you all. Um, this, this deserves a special dinner. Amen. Amen. Here, this is from your pastor. Amen. I ain't never seen you move that fast, Brother Johnny. Come here, Sister Shannon. Sister Shannon. Amen. 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 Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Because I love you all, I respect you, and I appreciate you. Amen. Amen. 56 years. Amen. 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 I thank you all for your witness, your testimony. Amen. For your commitment to excellence in the usher ministry. Amen. I know Brother Johnny sometimes is almost like a drill sergeant, but he just has a spirit of excellence. He wanted right. Amen. Amen. And so I thank God for you all. Amen. Praise his name. Amen. But Kay Moon, you give everybody on social media our giving options. And I trust that you are being blessed when you 
worship with us via social media, whether it's YouTube or Facebook Live, and we're giving you opportunities to partner with us, uh, Rim on uh, Cash App, you can mail it in, amen, and we want you to see those options, and if you would not only in tithes and offering, but if you would like to pledge, amen, type it in the chat box and we will respond to you, amen. Mr. Monty will get back with you and let you know that you can partner with us as we beautify the only standing edifice, the only standing building that survived the massacre because God had a plan for this church, not just the building, but God had a plan for this ministry. And so we want you to partner with us, amen. We want you to not only pledge, but send your love gift, amen. God is so awesome, and others who uh, want to be a part of what we're going to do. We're asking every member, every member to do the very best that you can on whatever level you can because everybody's circumstances are different. Amen. So it's not about an equal amount. It's about equal sacrifice. Amen. Because the widow only gave a mite, only gave a penny. But Jesus said she gave more than anybody because she gave all that she had. Amen. So we we will believe in God that you'll do the very best that you can. And so as we prepare now to worship God through the paying of, of God's tithes and the giving of offering, amen, uh, we need two volunteers to come and hold the baskets that we might worship through giving, amen, amen. Sister Pat, I saw you moving. Go ahead and grab one. Uh, amen. Sister Golden got up. Let her come from the back. Amen. 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 gracious father we thank you for your many many blessings oh god lord god we ask that you bless our giving today oh god bless all those who gave bless those with a heart to give and who couldn't bless all those who are online oh god share it with us today oh god we pray that these offerings are acceptable in that time as we plant a seed to grow our many many ministries oh god that we we ask all of these things, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen.
Jesus, 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 Jesus,
17 and the young man that lost his life at the school was only 17. So we have so much to be thankful for. Yeah. Last month when I was home celebrating my maternal aunt's 80th birthday, my uncle from Dallas, last living maternal uncle, he came here and visited with us at the church during Juneteenth. Um, we, as we started to sing happy birthday, uh, he introduced me to that song. He said, no, I have a different one. Amen. And I told him, because he and his wife, they watch us every Sunday. I said, on first Sunday in October, I'm going to play that at Vernon and, and let them hear a different birthday song. Life is worth celebrating. Amen. Life is worth celebrating. Amen. Amen. God said in his word in the book of Psalms, laughter does the heart as good as a medicine. Amen. So we have to learn how to celebrate and enjoy our fellowship together and just enjoy our life. Amen. Let, me, let us pray. Consecrate me, Lord, for your service. Amen. And I need you to repeat after me, everybody. God, give me what you know that I need and help me to live better today than I did on yesterday. Amen. Amen. As we examine this biblical narrative together, I want you to look with me at just one verse, Psalm 14. Psalm 14. Psalm 14, verse 1. Psalm 14, verse 1. It says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. The fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Oh, I want to preach to you this morning just from the simple theme, God is. God is. David says, the fool says, there is no God. I want to tell you, Vernon, we have a lot of fools in the world who believe that they have what they have or they've achieved what they've achieved all on their own. Yeah. Some people believe that they woke up under their own auspices and power. But 
when you look in the mirror at yourself, you should be able to see that there is a God. Church, all of us are living testimonies that there is a God. There are some of us who are honest enough to let the church know we'd be in trouble if God had not intervened in our lives. Some of us would be incarcerated had God not intervened in our lives. Some of us would have been in premature graves if God had not intervened in our lives. Some of us would have been in a convalescent home or nursing home if God had not intervened. And some of us would have been in a straitjacket, laughing when ain't nothing funny, talking to folk who ain't there, yeah, uh, fighting. You, you, you know, it's tough when you have to break up a fight with somebody who's fighting with themselves. Some of us perhaps would have been in that plight because life can put enough pressure on you if you're not able to pray, you can lose your mind. Situations can, can force you into a nervous breakdown if you internalize everything that has ever happened to you, everything that people have ever done to you, and that you never had the outlet to pray. Um, I am sure that I'm not the only one who can testify that God has done so much for me. Yeah, some can say he's been mother. I can say he's been a father. God has gotten me out of some tight spots in my life. I know you've never been in a jam, amen. And being in a jam does not necessarily denote that you've been wrong, amen. But sometimes life just happens, and I'm thankful that as I look back over my life, that I can testify, Vernon, that God has gotten me out of some tight spots. God, God has been with me when I didn't have nobody else to talk to. You know, friends are, are fake and fickle and phony. Uh, sometimes they'll disappear on you just when you need them most. But I'm sure most of us have seen or read the poem, Footprints in the Sand. When one such individual look back over their life and witness two sets of footprints in the sand, but when they got to the scenes in their life that were extremely difficult and tough, they only saw one set of footprints and that individual began to converse with God and, and fuss with God and fuss at God because and complain to God because they said, when times were toughest, you left me because I only saw one set of footprints. And then the voice of God spoke back and said, it was at those times that I carried you. That's why you only saw one set of footprint. It was those times that you couldn't stand on your own, you couldn't walk on your own, and I've had to... Is it anybody besides me who can thank God when you look back over your life, you can testify that there have been some times God had to carry you. Sometimes you couldn't stand on your own financially or emotionally or physically or spiritually, and others walked out on you because folk will walk out on you. Folk will turn their back on you, but you ought to throw your head back and say, but God, he, he carried me. When others walked away, he carried me. When I couldn't stand on my own, he carried me. When I was on the verge of giving up, he carried me. When folks said I'd never be nothing, he carried me. Even when I made a mess of my own situation and others threw me away, I thank God he carried me. Anybody know him to be a carrier? Yeah, yeah, won't he carry you? Won't he, won't he tote you? Won't he lift you? Matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, when we see so often times the sheep, when, when the word says uh, the shepherd should leave the 99 and, and go after the one, can I tell you what happens when a shepherd would go after the sheep? Because the sheep would oftentimes, they would nibble and eat, and the sheep are known to be the dumbest animals that they ever was and I wonder why metaphorically in the Bible we are referred to as sheep it's because sheep can't make it without a shepherd sheep keep their heads down all the time and sheep just nibble and they'll nibble themselves out to lostness and they uh, yeah Luke, Luke, Luke chapter 10 
uh, the parable of the lost sheep, when the shepherd went out and get, got the sheep, um, theologians and scholars tell us how they do it. Brother Fred, they take, they have the rod and their staff. On the end of that rod, that staff, there's a hook. Yeah, they would reach around that sheep and pull that sheep back to, back, back to safety. And can I tell you how they got the uh, sheep back to the fold? Oh, they didn't whip the sheep back. They didn't beat the sheep back. They didn't have a leash or a rope to lead the sheep back. Uh, uh, theologians and scholars and historians and educators say, uh, Dr. Wright, that they would shoulder the sheep. Watch this. They would pick that sheep up and put that sheep on their shoulder and they would take that sheep back to the fold. And I know there's somebody in here today besides me, when you look back over your life, there's been some time God has shouldered you. There's been some time you couldn't carry yourself, but God shouldered you. Sometimes you were about to lose your mind, but God shouldered you. Sometimes you wanted to throw in the towel, but God shouldered you. And I want to tell you today, he's still in the shouldering business. I, I, somebody said, I couldn't even walk. Walk if he was not holding my hand. I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. When I wandered off, when I got lost on my own, he shouldered me and brought me back. God is. Oh, he's a shoulderer. Now, now you educators, I don't know if that's a real word. And I know somebody will check it now. <laughs> yeah, yes. No doubt somebody got your phone already going to a thesaurus or the dictionary. But he's a shoulderer. <laughs> Yeah, he'll, he'll throw you across his shoulder and he'll take you back when you can't make it back on your own. In the text, this sermon is focused on one word. And I don't have to tell you where to find the word God because it appears 4,447 times in the Bible. Turn to any page in the Bible and you'll find the text of my sermon. Even though it's one word, you could spend an eternity on this word and you will never exhaust its meaning. When you wake up in the morning, God is. In sickness, God is. In hardship, God is. In loneliness, God is. And even on your deathbed, God is. The word is God. God whose height and death and length and breadth uh, no teacher has ever been able to fully comprehend or to explain God. No matter how much time and energy I spent decoding our God, he's still a mystery. Uh, to understand God, we have to accept some very basic truths. The first thing we have to accept is two words, God is. Uh, the, these two words are powerful and, and carry meaning. God, everybody say God is. If you allow these two words to rest in your heart and mind, it will affect your entire life. It will determine what you believe. It will determine and guide your daily life and walk. It will determine ultimately your eternal home simply by knowing God is. The psalmist tells us in Psalm 14, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. It is not his lips that speaks this blasphemous lie it's in his heart because you know the Lord said many of you honor me with your lips but your hearts are far from me the fool says there is no God simply because he does not wish to believe that there is a God all of our lives we have known that there is a power greater than our own if we deny this simple fact, then we too are fools. Yeah, and I know somebody said you shouldn't call anybody a fool, and you don't have to call them a fool, but their walk and their talk and their behavior will speak that for them. Matter of fact, that, that was a rich man who said, uh, uh, my crops have, have, have been so graciously 
abundantly growing that I'm going to tear down my barns and I'm going to build a bigger barns. And, but Jesus came and told him, uh, tonight thy food, thy soul is required of thee. And so sometimes we make some foolish choices and sometimes we make some foolish statements. There is an abundance of proof everywhere of the existence of our God. You are still alive. God got your child out of a jam. You, you almost lost your mind, but you still have your sanity. All of that proves that God is. Nature itself proves the existence of God, the sun and, and the rain. You, you do know what God did, don't you? God created the heavens and the earth. He, 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 he gave us... Uh, the carpet, the green grass, and he tacked it down with dandelions and daffodils and lofty pines and towering cedars. He, he gave us a sound system to birds. They, they sing when you want to hear them. They sing when you don't want to hear them. They sing without batteries. And they sing without being wound up. And the same song they sung to grandma, but they still sing to granddad. He, he told the frogs to croak, and they've still been croaking ever since. He told the mountain lion to growl. They've been growling ever since. He he told the birds to fly. They've been flying ever since. He told the fish to swim. They've been swimming. He told the cow to moo. They've been mooing ever since. God is. Uh, God is. The, the, the first thing we must accept is that God is. The second thing we must accept is that God made man. We didn't make him. He made us. And I know there are many schools that teach the theory of evolution. You, you do remember that one, don't you? They teach that we came from monkeys. And I know sometimes we act like... Yeah, sometimes we just act a monkey, yeah. Uh, but we did not come from monkeys. You know, if, if we were developed from monkeys, then why do we still have monkeys? I mean... I mean, there's not a single proof that one species has ever created or evolved into another species. Think of, just think about it for a minute. If mankind evolved or came from monkeys, how did it stop in midstream and leave some monkeys behind? Yeah, yeah. Here's what science wants us to swallow. Science wants us to believe that some unorganized living substance developed into all forms of life. My question is, who put the developing substance into the universe? Somebody say God is. All creation is the wisdom and the power of God. If God can create everything, then God created man. Man must accept that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That Genesis 1. Uh, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the earth. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Verse 3 said, and God said, let there be light and there was light and God said let there be firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters and God said let the earth bring forth grass and the herb yielding seed the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed in it of itself upon the earth and it was so somebody said it was so and God said verse 14 let there be lights in the firmaments of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years and God made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night he made the stars also and God said let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that have light and the fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven and God said let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind as verse 24 cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth of his kind and it was so but can I tell you what verse 26 said can I tell you what verse 20 verse 26 every believer every blood washed 
Christian ought to be able to say Genesis 1 26 and God said let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness and let them let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth so God created man in his own image and in the image of God created he him male and female created he them male and female created he them and God said everything that he made and behold it was very good and the evening and the morning were the sixth day tell somebody God made me you might not like how I look, you might not like how I act, but God made me. Uh, some folk are unsatisfied with themselves and they'll do everything to change their appearance. But don't you know, you were made in the image and in the likeness of God. And regardless of what society tells you, God did not make any junk. He made you to be like him. The first thing we must accept is the two words, God is. The second thing we must accept is that God God made man. The final thing we have to accept is the past and the present. That This proves that there is a God. See, there's a very special recorded history that proves there's a God. Just like the writings in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus lived and died. Rose again as recorded in the four gospels. Jesus did what the gospel says he did. He healed the sick. He cleansed the leper. He raised the dead. He fed 5,000 with five loaves and two small fish. He was crucified on a cross. He was raised from the dead and seen by a thousand. Come on, tell somebody there is a God. Listen, I know there is a God because I have a I've had a personal encounter with him and we ought to try to have an encounter with him every day of our lives. If there were no God, I would have made a total wreck of my life. I would have given up on life, but God has never failed me. Come on, tell somebody he's never failed me. He, there are times that we fail God, but I thank God he does not fail us. I will put my life, my reputation, my work, my everything ab about me upon the fact that God is. Come on tell somebody there is a God the man the man or the woman according to John Psalm 14 1 that says there is no God is a fool I don't care how much education you have it matters not if you have a master's a bachelor's a doctorate a PhD uh, whether you've been educated in a seminary or a secular school uh, that's why sometimes seminaries will mess people up and I ain't hating on your Dr. Myers but some of them are, are so educated and they try to come up with all kinds of theories to say that there really isn't a God, that really isn't a heaven or a hell, but the word of God says before one jot or one tittle of the word of God fails that heaven and earth would both pass away. Can I help you today? It didn't say the psalmist said it, that any man who denied the existence of a God is a fool. I didn't say it. I didn't call you a fool. The word said it. If you say that there is no God, then you are a fool. Man may think he knows everything. And some of us, I'm sure, have encountered some people who think they know everything. Anybody ever met anybody who acts like and thinks that they know everything? And perhaps if you never met anybody who thinks they know everything, then maybe you are the one. But God knows uh, the number of stars in the sky. God knows what's in the ocean. Many times we, we don't know what's in the ocean. The ocean is miles and miles deep. And I was just looking at some of the news coverage of the hurricane in Florida. And I thank God that it was no worse than what it was. But what I saw, Marvina, in Florida, in your home state, there was sharks in people's backyards that they got washed up from the ocean and they were wondering what to do. Sharks in their backyard. But God already knows what's in the ocean. God knows the temperature of the sun. God knows where the universe ends or begins. Uh, scientists are still debating whether or not the earth is flat or round. It really don't matter because God has the whole world in his hands. God knows the weight of a cloud. He knows the strength of a volcano. He knows the power of the wind. He knows the number of hairs on your head. And I know somebody says it's easy for him to... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Thank you for being my model today. But God knows the number of hairs on your head. Did y'all get the model? Did you get the model on the camera? Let the folks see the model. Let the folks see the model. Come on, my, where my camera people let God knows the number of hairs on his head. And yeah, all right. Yeah, give him his moment. Yeah. He is the heavenly hope for the hopeless. Uh, he is the deliverer for the lost. He is the freedom to, he has, gives us freedom to forgive. He is sincere in everything he does. He has lasting love. The man or woman who says in their heart, there is no God is a fool. I know there have been times in our life that we feel like God has left us. Have I got a witness here? There have been times in our lives when we feel like God is looking the other way. And even Jesus had some moments like that. Beloved, when he was on the cross, he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Sometimes we go through some things and we have to wonder, how could a good father, how could my daddy watch me suffer? How could he watch me cry? How could he watch me be hurt? How could he watch me lose loved ones and not step in and, and do something about it? I know some of us have wondered, where was God when we lost our loved one? I've been there. But can I tell you where he was? He was at the same place he was when he lost his only son. He was right there. He said it rains on the just as well as the unjust. So as I close and leave you, Vernon, uh, remember that really is a God. And when you look back over your life, you want to be able to say God has uh, smiled on me. He has set me free. Is there anybody here can say, God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. He is the source of all my joy. He fills me with his love and everything I ever need. What does God do? He sends it down from up above. I need about 10 folk to testify that God has smiled on you. God has been good to you. God has made ways out of no ways. God has turned midnights into day. I'm gone, Vernon, and we don't know what tomorrow holds, uh, but I heard the hymnologist say, we know uh, who holds tomorrow, and uh, we know who holds our hands. Uh, can I tell you this? God uh, sent his son, and uh, they called him Jesus. Uh, he came to love, uh, to heal, uh, and forgive. Uh, he bled and died just to buy our pardon and an empty grave is there to prove that he lives. So as I leave you, Vernon, you ought to help me say, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he lives, he holds my future. Is it anybody that can say, God is, he's my everything. He's my friend when I'm friendless. He's my bridge over troubled waters. He's my money when I'm broke. He's my friend when I'm lonely. He's my doctor when I'm sick. Yeah, God is. He's my shelter when I'm outdoors. God is my lawyer when I'm in trouble. He's mother when mother's gone. 
he's father when father is gone God is a way maker a burden bearer David said the Lord is my shepherd I heard Ezekiel say he's a fire he's a wheel in the middle of a wheel what do you call him he's my all in all is it anybody today who can leave by saying God is everything that I need him to be yeah he specializes yeah in being what nobody else can be God is God is God is so the next time your back is against the wall and you don't have the answer to life's question just throw your head back and say God is God is God is when depression gets a hold on you God is when loneliness pulls you down God is when life hits you upside the head God is when people act funny God is when friends turn their back on you God is is there anybody here who know that God is I dare you to tell him thank you for all that he's been to you for all he done for you by faith for all you believe he's gonna do for you he's my help anybody know him to be a helper the psalm said he's a very present help in the times of trouble psalm 121 saying i'll lift up my eyes until the hills from whence cometh my help my 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 help does not come from Biden my help does not come from the Republican or Democratic Party my help comes from the, the Lord and the psalmist said he will not suffer my foot to be moved come hell or high water wind or storm and shall not be moved like a tree planted by the river of water I, I shall not be moved because I got my hand in the hand of the man who steals the waters I got my hand in the hand of the man who come to see is the anybody here who know that God is tell him thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you y'all excuse me but you don't know like I know what the Lord has been to me God is God is. Come on, praise team. Let the doors of the church open. Candidate for baptism by Christian experience for rededication for special prayer. Whatever you need today, the Lord has it. Amen. 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 Whatever you need, he can do it. Yeah. Social media, if you have a prayer request, if you desire to unite with this church or church in your community, just type it in the chat box. Type it in the chat box. Yeah, type it in the chat box. We'll respond to you. Yeah, praise his name. 
God wants you to know that he really is. He's the missing link in your life. That emptiness, that void. Uh, no woman, no man can really feel it. Sometimes we're looking for the right thing, but we're looking in the wrong places. God is. God is. Praise his name. When you come today,
There's a verse that says, God is my joy in the time of sorrow. following the commandments of God and walking from his forth in his holy ways draw near with faith amen all the officers would you come in this first collect God is God is God is my all Officers, make your humble confession to Almighty God, God meekly kneeling upon your knees. Let us all share together the general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord, Provoking, we do earnestly have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we in to the honor. Has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto you. Have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness 
and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all time and all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy holy name evermore, praising thee and saying, Holy, holy, holy. Lord, Lord heaven. Amen. Our prayer of humiliation and our prayer of consecration will come from our chief celebrant, Reverend Karen Roach. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, yes. we most humbly beseech you and grant that we, receiving your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Bread, Reverend Roach the Wine. Amen. And the church saying, Let us. This is a, is a happy moment. 
This is a celebratory moment. Yes. As with my Heaven renewed your covenant, rise, go in peace. And as these go, others may come. Amen. Amen. Let them. Together, on our knees. Yes. Praise his name. When. On my knees, with my face, oh Lord, make your humble confession to the Almighty God by meekly kneeling upon your knees. Amen. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, broken for you. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This is my blood, the blood of the New Testament. As often as you shall drink of it, the Lord said, Do this and remember to me. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. and go in peace. As these go, others may come. Break bread. Own. Make your humble confession by meekly kneeling up on your knees. With the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, take eat. All of it. Have mercy. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and gave it to them. Said, take this blood of the New Testament. Take drink all of it. Have renewed your covenant rise and go in peace. May the God of peace go with you. As these go others may come. Let us prepare now to receive the usher ministry. The usher ministry Yes, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Yes. Make your humble confession by meekly kneeling. Body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His name, yeah, there was the blood of singing glory down at the cross where. Having renewed your covenant, us just rise and go in peace. May the God of peace go with you. 
I cried. We will now. Reverend Cameron will now serve the stewardess ministry. And as we do that, let us keep Mother Freddie in our prayers. Amen. Let us keep Mother Freddie, Harrison, Sister Carolyn Wall, Brother Johnny West, and others in our prayers. Amen. Those who care to kneel, make your humble confession by kneeling. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ broken for you. Glory, the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah, there to my heart was the blood. Sing and glow. As Brother Fred continues to play softly, let us all pray together now the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, on and but for thine power forever. Amen. Amen. Precious name. Rise, my sisters, and go in peace while we're still soft. Brother Prier, would you take that offering basket now and come down front? Keep, keep it right there, Brother Fred. Singing glory. I said earlier that I wanted us to do something to be a blessing to Mian and her mother. Um, about the third time she's had to fly down the last month or so, and, and it's costly there, and, and she's not asked us for anything, and she didn't have to. And I just, um, if you're making check. You can make it to Vernon and we'll do one check. Uh, but I'm just challenging you. Um, we want to bless this family. Her mother is gravely ill. and uh, But God is yet able. And, and, and I'm encouraging Dr. Eulenberg right now to keep fighting. Amen. I pray God for an appetite. Pray God that she gets her strength back. I pray God that she's able to go out and tell people about a lynched Black Wall Street, the book that she authored so eloquently. And I speak life, I speak healing, I speak God raising her up from her bed of affliction. He can do that. Somebody say God is. He's more, Dr. Eulenberg, he's more than a doctor, he's a healer. He's a healer and we claim it, we receive it. And Mian, you stay encouraged. Amen. Now, Brother Fred's going to pump that up a little bit, and we're going to sing that, and whatever you can sow into the life of this family, would you, would you do that? And as we pray that God would keep us strong during this radiation, during this chemo, because he's that kind of God. Amen. They didn't, I thought they brought an empty one out. Amen. All right, you see he has the tambourine because we don't have an empty basket out here. And um, I knew there was one back there. Amen. So um, this tambourine won't hold no chain now because it got holes in you. We want a quiet offering, amen, a soft one. Amen. Don't everybody get up at the same time, but come on, bring your gift back to this family. Glory to 
worship you. I am so wondrously, drudgely saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within there at the cross where he took me in singing glory one time glory to his name precious name read to your name yeah, there was the blood singing glow as we stand. Glory to God bless these gifts. God, we pray healing. We pray recovery. We pray encouragement. We pray strength. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, and it is so, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. What do we believe? Born, suffered. Remember at four o'clock today, those who are interested in what's going on in our community and our school system, meet us at the cultural center across the street at four o'clock. Amen. 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 And if you can't come, be praying that we can leave that with a solution. Uh, at least start something, some healthy dialogue. We have to stop this madness and stop this violence. Amen. We have to do that. I told you all a couple of Sundays ago, things happen when the church prays. When the church prays, amen. We got to stop talking about stuff and start praying. Amen. Um, only four trustees have signed their consent form and came to meet to be on the ballot for next Sunday. Um, two, three others have appointments. And if you've not came in by Thursday, your name will not be on the ballot. Amen. That's the only sure way of not being elected a trustee. Amen. Um, but on next Sunday, we will have a trustee election. And we will be electing, uh, according to the discipline, one half of the numbers that are submitted. Amen. Please see Sister Connolly. Brother Fred, uh, for your donation, for your pledge to help us beautify Vernon. We cannot let Greenwood Rising and everything else on this street look uh, like it's 2022. And we still look like 1914 when it was built, amen. 1940 when it was rebuilt. We, ha we have to improve upon what God has blessed us to have, amen. Just some good news. Uh, uh, we've been working, but Fred, uh, Sister Ayin with our grant writer, and uh, pray much on Tuesday. Pray much on Tuesday that when our grant is submitted uh, to fund our feeding ministry, to completely fund our feeding ministry, everything from security to a donation or stipend for the volunteers. Amen. The word says you have not because you ask not. And we're going after it in a major way. And we need you to pray. Amen. Amen. We need you to pray. Amen. Things happen when the church prays. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
praise God. Praise Him above, here below. Praise Him above. Ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. be remiss if I didn't ask you to put your hands together to thank God for the stewardess ministry. Amen. For making it possible for us to observe one of the sacraments of the church. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and is able to present your faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever and the church sang together. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody God is.